Steinhardt Aquarium is taking visitors into the twilight zone. We have no way of knowing exactly what their final form could look like. For all we know... Over 90% of that living space is in the ocean. Humboldt squid are found in the eastern Pacific Ocean, typically between 600 to Captured what's believed to be the first images of a rare deep sea fish. This isn't an animal. It's a group of animals joined together in something like a hive. Not all of the universe's darkest and strangest places are far away. Some are right under the ocean. Welcome to the deep sea, a cold, dark world with crushing pressure and no sunlight. It might seem empty, but it's not. This hidden world is full of strange, creepy creatures. Some have glowing eyes. Some have no eyes. Some have clear heads. Others glow in the dark to hunt. So why do deep sea animals get weirder the deeper we go? Let's find out. Chapter one, the twilight zone. About 200 to 1000 meters under the ocean is the mesopelagic zone, also called the twilight zone. A small amount of sunlight gets here, but not much. When the divers arrived at the twilight zone, they did find something unusual. They found fish, new species that have never been seen before. Red light disappears first because it's the weakest. That's why animals like the vampire squid have red skin. In this dark zone, red looks black, helping them stay hidden. But don't worry, the vampire squid doesn't drink blood. It floats around slowly, catching marine snow, which is just tiny bits of dead animals poop and old plankton falling from above. It has big glowing eyes and spiny arms, so it looks scary. But really, it lives a quiet life, eating ocean dust and moving very slowly to save energy. Chapter two, into the deep with monsters. Now let's sink deeper, past thousand meters, where not a single ray of light survives. Here, things start to look very alien. Meet the big fin squid. Found over 6,000 meters deep, it has arms up to eight meters long and bends them at weird angles, like it has elbows. Beneath a thousand meters, there's no light down there. But a lot of animals in those depths are bioluminescent. It's life that glows. Its ghostly see-through body floats eerily in the water and scientists still don't fully understand how it eats. Some say it might drag its arms on the sea floor, snatching food. Others think it just waits for prey to float by and grabs it passively. Whatever it does, one thing's for sure, this thing looks straight out of a sci-fi horror film. Chapter three, carnivores where you least expect them. Normally, when we think of sea creatures like sponges or sea squirts, we picture gentle filter feeders. But in the deep, things change. Take the predatory tunicid. It looks like an eyeless sock puppet with its mouth wide open, but it's a killer. As tiny animals drift by, it traps them inside and slowly digests them alive. Getting a really good baseline of what those communities are now and measuring changes in those will really help us understand. Even sponges, those squishy bath accessories, become vicious. At depths beyond 200 meters, we get carnivorous sponges. Covered in tiny hooks and spikes, they trap passing animals in their body and feast. You definitely wouldn't want to wash with these. There's the harp sponge with long rows of spines and the ping pong tree sponge with creepy round bulbs. They don't move, they just wait for dinner to come to them. Chapter four, the midnight zone. Go below 1800 meters and you reach the midnight zone. No light, no plants, just hungry predators. One of the strangest is the gulper eel. Its mouth is bigger than its body and can stretch like a balloon. This helps it swallow animals larger than itself handy in a place with little food. This is the video showing the black sea devil anglerfish, which tends to live thousands of meters. Then there's the anglerfish. There are hundreds of kinds, and most have a glowing fishing rod on their heads. They use it to lure prey close, then snap them up with sharp teeth and stretchy jaws. One anglerfish weighed just nine grams, but had 12 grams of food in its belly. That's like a person eating over 200 burgers at once. Crazy, right? Chapter five, light in the darkness. But not all light is used to hunt. Some deep sea animals use bioluminescence to hide. This is called counter illumination. They glow on their bellies to match the faint light from above, blending in and vanishing from sight. But even that's not enough against some hunters. Enter the barrel eye fish, possibly the weirdest fish ever. It has giant tube-shaped eyes inside its transparent head. 
Those eyes point straight up so it can watch for prey above. But scientists were puzzled. How can it aim its mouth at the prey if it can't see forward? Then they discovered the eyes can rotate forward. Yep. It can roll its eyes down and forward through its head to track prey, giving it a visual arc of 75 degrees. Humans can only move our eyes about 45 degrees. It's like having eyes that can look through your own brain. Chapter 6. Beyond Vision. Below 4,000 meters, even bioluminescence starts to disappear. At this depth, some creatures lose their eyes completely. Meet the tripod fish. It stands motionless on the sea floor using its long fins like a camera tripod. With no need for eyes, it instead feels the water with its fins, which act like arms. These fins are packed with nerves and can detect even the tiniest movements around them. When something swims by, snap, dinner is served. Chapter 7, The Deepest of the Deep. And now the final descent to the Hadal Zone, named after Hades. This is the deepest ocean trench level, found over 8,000 meters below the surface. Here, scientists recently discovered a new record holder, the deepest fish ever found, a translucent ghost-like Hadal snailfish floating silently 8,336 meters deep. No scales, no color, no beauty by human standards, just an eerie blob that survives in a place with pressure so high it would crush a car. This fish is more mystery than monster, but it's living proof that life adapts, even here. Chapter 8. Why are they so creepy? So, why do things seem creepier the deeper we go? It's partly because these creatures are so different from us. No sunlight, no air, nothing we're used to. They've changed over millions of years to survive in total darkness. Big mouths, glowing parts, see-through bodies. We think they look scary, but for them, it's just normal. It also has to do with how we see the world. The sky feels bright and safe, but the deep sea? It's dark and unknown, so our brains see it as scary. But here's the truth. These aren't monsters. They're amazing. Life has found a way to survive even in the deepest, darkest places on Earth. The deeper we go, the stranger life gets. That's what makes it feel creepy. And for a shark that's been around long enough to have attended Saturn's wedding, I don't know why, but every picture of them looks like they're str But maybe that's also what makes it worth exploring. So, do you think deep sea creatures are creepy or cool? Tell us in the comments. And if you liked this dive into the deep, tap like, hit subscribe, and ring the bell for more ocean mysteries. Until next time, stay curious.